The movie kicks off in 1995. Back then, there was this Russian mafia gang that showed up in the Riviera area of France. They basically wiped out the local mafia to take control of the business there. The leader of this Russian mafia crew is a guy named Karasov, and he used to be a special forces soldier. But now, he's switched gears and become a ruthless mob boss, willing to do anything for cash. During this time, he also brought in a young girl named Anna, who got forced into a really tough spot. Fast forward 15 years, Anna's had enough of this criminal life, and she's itching to break free. She's turned into this lady fueled by revenge, and along with her buddies, they're cooking up a big plan to get back at Karasov for all the bad stuff he did to them. Now, around the same time, there were a bunch of guys trying to steal a fancy car in a parking lot. What they didn't expect was that the car belonged to this famous courier named Frank. Lucky for Frank, he tweaked his car so he could control it with his phone, which totally messed with the robbers' heads. At first, Frank just tried to brush them off because he had to pick someone up real quick. But these guys attacked him first, so Frank had to defend himself, and he did it pretty brutally. Because he used to be a special forces, so he handled those robbers in seconds. After dealing with them, he headed off to pick up his client, and it was his own dad, Martin. Martin recently retired after being a secret agent for years. He was the top agent in all of England, which explains why he got a nice fat pension. On the way home, Martin mentioned how he wanted to get closer to his son, Frank, because, well, both of them were always wrapped up in their own busy jobs. On that same evening, there was this woman, Cho, in a hotel room with her client, Turgeon. But Turgeon was actually Karasov's accountant and trusted buddy. Turgeon and his crew were really eager for some action with Cho. But Cho mentioned that another girl, her friend Jaina, was on her way. And when Jaina arrived, she shot Turgeon and his gang. Turns out, Jaina and Cho were pals of Anna, and they had their own score to settle with Karasov. After dealing with Turgeon and his crew, Jaina and Cho quickly cleaned up the mess. They even found a lady's body lying around, and just to throw off any suspicion, Cho put a necklace with the Karasov organization symbol around her neck. Then they took a locker key from Turgeon, and they made sure there wasn't a trace left behind by burning all the bodies in the room. Around the same time, Frank and his dad were sharing a meal, chatting about their jobs. Out of the blue, Frank's phone rang, and a woman he didn't know asked him to be her driver. Meanwhile, Karasov was off partying on a cruise ship with his buddies Lyovsky and Yurinov. These two had helped Karasov out back when he took control of the Riviera area. While they were having a blast, Karasov got word that Turgeon had met his end. So, he and his assistant Mazat decided to check out Turgeon's body at the police station. But it bugged Karasov a bit, because the police were pointing fingers at him for being involved in Turgeon's death. So, he kind of threw down a challenge to prove how powerful he was. Meanwhile, Frank met up with his new client at a restaurant, and the client turned out to be Anna. But following with Frank's rules, they didn't swap names right away. Anna had something in mind. She wanted Frank to help her deliver two packages, weighing in at 104 kilos in total. Anna made it clear to Frank that his job was just to keep her safe during the journey, and she gave him some money up front as a guarantee. Frank went home, prepped his best car, and had to break the news to his dad that they couldn't have dinner together because he had to handle a delivery. Poor Martin, he had even gotten a fancy bottle of wine for Frank. Later on, about three hours later, Frank pulled up in front of a bank to pick up Anna. But Anna was wearing a wave to disguise herself. She then persuaded Jaina and Cho to join them in Frank's car. At first, Frank hesitated because he realized the package Anna mentioned was actually two people. However, Jaina wasn't messing around. She pointed a gun at Frank, and they showed him a video of Martin, who was being held captive. And Maria was in on it with Anna and her crew. Around the same time, the police started getting suspicious of Frank and the gang, so Frank had to act quickly to get Anna and her buddies out of there. Thanks to Frank's excellent driving skills, he managed to outsmart the police, causing them to crash into each other. The police then called for backup on motorcycles to try and get past the cars blocking their way. However, Frank was a sharp driver. He led the police to a junction and cleverly tampered with a water pipe, making the road slippery, causing the police cars to skid and crash one by one. Once they successfully escaped, Frank switched to a different car. He then decided to blow up the old car to get rid of any evidence, like his fingerprints. Meanwhile, 
Karasov was getting anxious when he discovered that his valuable possessions and confidential documents had gone missing. It didn't take long for him to realize that Anna had orchestrated Turgeon's murder right from the beginning. Their plan was to get hold of the bank locker key and take Karasov's money. But what Karasov didn't know was that the mastermind behind this was Anna. In a bid to uncover the culprits, Karasov instructed Mesa to round up all the women working in his organization. After conducting a thorough check, it became apparent that four people were conspicuously absent, Anna and her three friends. Long story short, Frank did an excellent job and safely got Anna and her friends to their hideout. As per their agreement, Frank wanted to take his father home, but Anna declined. She revealed that Martin had been poisoned by Maria. If Martin didn't receive the antidote within 12 hours, he would die. To obtain the antidote, Frank had to agree to one more mission for Anna. Anna explained that this mission involved robbing Karasov's club. Frank had to accompany her to steal an anesthetic gas from the hospital. Disguised as a doctor and a patient, they searched for the gas storage room. Anna shared that she had been under Karasov's control since she was 12 years old. Frank wasn't surprised by Karasov's behavior, as he had once been friends with him during his time in the Special Forces. Shortly thereafter, they successfully acquired the gas. Frank had to incapacitate the suspicious duty doctor by knocking him out. Meanwhile, Martin was at his headquarters trying to woo Gina, and things were getting intimate between them. However, Cho interrupted them, pulling Gina away for their ongoing robbery mission. Outside the base, Maria was busy recruiting a group of thugs by offering an irresistible fee of $1,000. Maria also appeared to be flirting with a man who looked like a pilot. On another front, Karasov attempted to reach out to Yurinov for assistance. Yurinov promptly ordered his men to contact his private pilot. To Maria's surprise, the man she had charmed turned out to be Yurinov's private pilot, and she now had him at gunpoint. Meanwhile, Frank came back to pick up Anna, Cho, and Gina. They were all ready with their disguises, including wigs. The three women were determined to carry out their revenge mission at Karasov's club. Upon arrival, Frank swiftly dealt with the club's bouncer, allowing them to enter. Inside, Frank's job was to set up a gas cylinder he had stolen from the hospital. However, he got caught by one of Karasov's men, and Frank had to fight him off until he passed out. Surprisingly, there were more of Karasov's men that Frank had to contend with. In the end, Frank sprang into action, taking down three of them simultaneously. At the same time, Anna and her friends began releasing the gas Frank had installed, putting everyone in the club to sleep. While this was happening, Karasov's guards started showing up and surrounded Frank. But Frank, always up for a challenge, found it easy to take them on. His impressive fighting skills allowed him to quickly deal with all of them. Meanwhile, Anna and her friends were busy hacking into Lowski's computer. He had passed out from the anesthetic gas. Anna transferred all the money from his account. When they were done, Frank, Anna, and her friends prepared to make their exit. However, they were ambushed by dozens of gangsters sent by Karasov. Nevertheless, Frank didn't back down and chose to fight rather than flee. In the end, he easily defeated all the gang members, and their mission to rob the place was a success. The following day, Maria and Martin disguised themselves as a pilot and flight attendant, taking the place of Yurinov's private pilot. Initially, Yurinov became suspicious of their actions and contacted his private pilot to inquire about the change. However, Maria's hired men had already taken the pilot captive and forced him to pretend to be ill, granting Martin permission from Yurinov. Once Yurinov was lured into the trap, Maria drugged him with a drink laced with sleeping medicine. She used Yurinov's fingerprint to unlock his cell phone and access the password for Yurinov's safe. Her hired men then proceeded to retrieve the items from the safe. On another front, Martin incapacitated his co-pilot to prevent the plane from taking off. Unfortunately, the co-pilot's fall accidentally activated a lever, causing the plane to start moving on its own. Maria and Martin also had to contend with Yurinov's men and airport security officers who surrounded them. Fortunately, Frank arrived just in time. Using his exceptional driving skills, Frank rescued them both. Sadly, Maria was shot by Yurinov's men, and she was bleeding heavily. Frank had to take a shortcut, determined to reach the airport corridor closest to the exit. In short, when they reached the headquarters, Anna and her two friends immediately searched for a way to rescue Maria. They also asked for Frank and Martin's assistance. 
However, Frank refused to help until Anna provided an antidote for his father. In the end, Anna confessed that she had tricked Frank by claiming she had poisoned Martin. She had lied to get Frank's help. Upon hearing this, Frank decided to assist Anna in saving Maria. Fortunately, Martin's past experience as a secret agent enabled him to save Maria's life. Once things settled down, Anna apologized to Frank for her actions, including kidnapping Martin and lying about the poison. As a gesture of apology, Anna invited Frank to be intimate, and Frank accepted her apology. Meanwhile, Karasov, Yurinov, and Leofsky were baffled as their belongings had been stolen by the same culprits. After some investigation, Leofsky figured out that the thieves were prostitutes working for Karasov and Frank, who happened to be Karasov's friend. Upon hearing this, Karasov strongly denied any involvement in the robbery and was determined to apprehend the culprits. At the same time, Frank and Anna had just finished their intimate moment. Anna then shared her childhood story with Frank, revealing how she had been enslaved and mistreated by Karasov. Back then, she was helpless, but now she was determined to seek revenge on Karasov. A little later, Frank and Martin prepared to head home as Anna and her friends planned to continue their mission without involving him. During the journey, Frank mentioned that he would take his father home and then go to Paris until the issue was resolved. However, Martin disagreed and urged Frank to confront Karasov like a true man if he was after him. Unfortunately, Martin couldn't persuade Frank to change his decision, so he left for Paris. After dropping Martin off, Frank received a call from Karasov, who had apparently kidnapped Martin. Karasov offered to release Martin if Frank handed over Anna and her friends. Without hesitation, Frank returned and asked Anna for her help. Anna, feeling indebted to Martin, agreed to assist Frank. Gina, however, didn't join this mission as she had gone back to her family's home. Long story short, they headed to Karasov's yacht to surrender. When they arrived, Karasov welcomed them, especially Frank, who used to be his close friend. The reason for their strained relationship was revealed. During their military service, Karasov had become focused on making money and had betrayed his comrades, while Frank remained an honest soldier. Since then, they had been on opposing sides. To expedite matters, Frank handed over a secret document stolen by Anna at the beginning of the story, and as agreed, Martin would be released. Shortly after that, Leowski and Yurinov arrived on the ship. Anna saw an opportunity and played them against each other, by pretending to be the person ordered by Karasov to rob them. She claimed that she had been tasked with stealing from Leofsky and Yurinov. This led to a standoff among the Russian Mafia members as they pointed their weapons at one another. Leofsky demanded that Karasov show his account balance, and if it had increased significantly, it would prove he was behind the robbery. Meanwhile, Gina sneaked onto the submerged ship and transferred all the stolen money to Karasov's account, causing a significant balance increase. This further fueled the anger of Leofsky and Yurinov. Karasov, unable to explain the situation, lost control and started shooting everyone, including Leofsky and Yurinov. While chaos erupted, Gina moved all of Karasov's money into Anna's account. Unfortunately, Meza discovered Jaina's actions and shot her in the waist, but Gina didn't give up. She quickly got back up and took down Mesa. While Frank was mercilessly beating Karasov's men, Martin joined the fray. Despite his age, Martin's fighting skills were on par with those of typical secret agents. He noticed Gina lying on the floor, her life slipping away due to the blood loss. Sadly, Gina couldn't be saved, just like Cho and Maria, who had also fallen victim to Karasov's brutality. The only survivor was Anna, whom Karasov had forcibly taken away. Frank attempted to rescue Anna, but had to battle Karasov's men first. After defeating them, he chased Karasov onto land, and a fierce fight ensued on the cliff's edge. Frank relentlessly attacked Karasov, but he sustained numerous wounds and found himself overpowered, almost on the brink of death. Thankfully, Anna intervened by shooting Karasov, causing him to fall into the ocean and meet his demise. However, Anna then aimed her gun at Frank, contemplating whether to kill him out of fear that he might become a traitor and expose her crimes. Frank reassured her, expressing genuine concern for Anna. He couldn't bear to see her imprisoned, despite the many times she had deceived him. The following day, the police detectives called Martin to provide his testimony. Being a responsible father, Martin only implicated Karasov as the primary criminal in the case and chose not to implicate Frank. A month later, 
Anna decided to distribute the money from the robbery to the families of her friends, as well as to Frank and Martin. The moral of this story teaches us that seeking revenge and betraying others can lead to a never-ending cycle of violence and pain. On the other hand, forgiveness and empathy are much stronger tools for healing and redemption.